so this is sort of the beginning of a simple titration lab uh, and we'll be titrating this white grape juice here actually uh, with some strong base sodium hydroxide uh, here so the goal is that there is acid there's like a naturally occurring acid in juices like this it's called citric acid um, so this is 100% juice, but it has citric acid in it because it's naturally occurring. Um, so we're just basically going to find out the concentration of that citric acid in our juice. Um, what you need to do is you need to take 25 milliliters of the white grape juice, and you can go ahead and add it to a beaker. Not 25, sorry, my bad. You need to t take 20 milliliters of the grape juice. Uh, and add 80 milliliters of pure distilled water. So we'll just dilute the grape juice, but it's enough, it's enough grape juice so that we can actually put a pH probe and measure the values as the titration occurs. Next thing that you want to do is set up our beaker of diluted grape juice onto one of these stands so that we can put a pH probe in it, as well as having the titrate or the uh, burette over it. You want to make sure that it's on so that you can spin this uh, and the acid and the base will mix together. As we just mentioned, you're going to want this burette here and you're going to want to fill it with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Um, but in order to do so, you are going to need one of these funnel things up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put some of our 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide into it until we get to someplace near the top here. So you can hopefully see there that the line's just under the one milliliter mark. Uh, so that's a good place to stop there. We definitely know that we'll have enough sodium hydroxide because we almost have 50 milliliters. Uh, so that will be good. And there now we have added and filled up our burette so we can begin the lab. You'll also want to set up graphical analysis here uh, for a pH probe. You can see our pH probe is plugged in, um, but what we're going to need is we're going to need to set this up so that we can collect the data properly. We're going to go ahead and change the mode here to event-based. We want our event name to be milliliters, uh, oops, sorry, or let's say volume of the base, and the units are going to be milliliters. So we're going to record values for the amount of base that we've added and the pH level that it's currently reading. Uh, here, we can go ahead and click the collect button. And we'll now be putting the pH probe into the juice. Here you can hopefully see that we have the pH probe into the juice all set up, as well as the burette filled up, and a computer with graphical analysis up and running. Uh, so the first data point that we're going to collect is the zero milliliter mark, obviously, which is, as you can see right here. So again, here we got the zero milliliter mark of the base that we've added. Zero milliliters, we're going to go ahead and keep that point at 3.45 on the pH level. Um, so there we are. We'll move on to the next point now. Another important thing to notice is we're where we are starting on the burette, as this will be important. Uh, so this is zero milliliters of base added so far. Uh, at 1.1, 1 .1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1 1.62 or so milliliters uh, is the initial is is the initial point. So we'll just want to record that somewhere 1.62. Probably in about one, maybe a little bit more than one milliliter increments, we'll go ahead and add some base. So here we are. That's the first bit added. Uh, as you can see here, we are currently at 2.68 or so milliliters. Uh, so we'll do 2.68 minus the original 1.62 to get the total milliliters of the base we've added so far as 
on the computer here, we'll go ahead and keep this point, 1.06 milliliters of base added with a pH level of 3.55. Keep the point, move on to the next one. Moving on to the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more base. You'll see here, if this focuses, you'll see here that we're at about 3.6 exactly. Um, so we'll do 3.6 minus the original 1.62 milliliters to get the total amount of base added so far as 1.98. On the computer, we can go ahead and keep this point, 1.98 milliliters added, uh, and keep the point. And then we'll just repeat this process and continue going forward Hopefully you can see here on the graph that the pH levels are rising slightly more per milliliter that we've been adding because we've been trying to keep it relatively consistent. Uh, the curve has started to increase a little bit, going a little bit higher, if you can see that trend. So we're going to start slowing down a little bit, maybe going a little bit less than a milliliter. Um, anywhere, probably not too much below half a milliliter at a time. Uh, so, yeah. So after adding a little bit more, uh, you can see here that the pH level has increased a whole bunch and is still climbing, so we're going to wait for that to stabilize a little bit before adding the next point. Now that we've kind of crossed the equivalence point here, we can go ahead and start adding a little bit more of this grape juice at a time. Uh, we'll, or sorry, of the sodium hydroxide at a time. So we'll probably bump it up to about a milliliter at a time, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I'd probably go to about 11, a pH of 11 or so. Um, if it doesn't quite get there, or it goes a little bit past that, that's fine. But that'll just give us enough data points on both sides of the uh, equivalence point here. And here is the data. This is the completed data on um, our entire uh, curve here, all the way down from, what was that? 3.4, a pH of 3.45 of the initial grape juice, uh, and up to 11 after adding the sodium hydroxide. So that's the data for you. You can use this uh, data and the equivalence point you can calculate 
and kind of take a guess at, I suppose, to see what the concentration of the citric acid in the beverage is. We're given this equation here at the top um, to help us in the calculations to find exactly how many uh, milliliters of the sodium hydroxide you need um, and to find out how many moles of citric acid there are. This will tell you uh, moles of citric acid there were in the 20 milliliters that we had. Um, from there, you can calculate the concentration of citric acid in the white grape juice. So hopefully this lab helps and gives you a good understanding of what to do for a simple titration like this.